So example here of another smallish boat uh, trailer. As you can see, it's just left outside. Uh, it's not under cover or anything. Sort of half stuffed in a hedge and uh, just, you know, waiting for the boat to be loaded uh, to be trundled down to the coast. Um, and that's the life of a lot of boat trailers, really. And uh, they often don't have much maintenance. So I'm just going to talk about uh, just tightening up the bearings, really. So what's all that? So you've got the wheel there and uh, this particular trailer on the on the hub somebody's written uh, seven stroke 19 and I think that is uh, when they got serviced last um, but if you just well on the, the trailer's unloaded if you just uh, push the wheel back and forth like that the uh, the, the wheel is basically wobbling and you can hear it that knocking it is the bearings that are loose and they need tightening up and adjusting um, but uh, yeah, just a little thing on old trailers while I'm about it. If we come to the other side so we can see better, uh, you've got these types of uh, suspension units, very common. Um, they just bolt on. So you've got the arm here, you've got the axle there, and uh, there's an arm that comes into this sort of box section. And uh, essentially there's, there's four sort of rubbers uh, in the corners here, and you've got the diamond sort of um, shaped axle that comes into here and that diamond twists and turns onto the rubbers which gives you suspension and um, yeah you can run the risk with older trailers that these rubbers in here are perished and you can't really tell until it's too late and I have had in the past these basically collapse in here so there's no resistance which means this arm comes up and I've had a few sort of slight disasters where the, basically the trailer has fallen onto the wheel rub the wheel the the tire and you get a flat and uh, there's nothing else you can do basically so yeah if you're buying an old boat that uh, might seem too good to be true uh, deal wise and it all comes with a trailer I mean look at this guy this this is a dead boat on here and basically a dead trailer but all these parts are uh, sort of replaceable they just bolt on bolt off but uh, yeah so look at this wheel so <laughs> There's the bearing there, we'll, we'll be looking at one uh, in a bit. Um, and uh, there's a suspension unit and everything like that. So they, they all just, you know, go in salt water to launch your boat. Don't get much of a wash down and uh, it all becomes a bit of a nightmare very quickly. Rusty parts like that. So, yeah, you've got to be wary with boat trailers, really. They spend a lot of time doing nothing. And then suddenly they've got to do quite a bit. Here's another trailer. Uh, this obviously looks a lot more tidy. The way the boat's got a cover and all that sort of carry on. So you'd expect that the trailer to be in good order as well. And it is. This particular one's a piggyback type. It's uh, the second wheel there is a launching trolley for this. So this trailer shouldn't get anywhere near water really. And so it stands a better chance of uh, remaining in good condition. There's not much rust on the wheel. Bearing looks okay. Give it a slight wobble not much played I can feel in there but it's very similar look suspension unit in there so they're all of a similar design but subtle differences yeah so the yard trailer a lot more modern two axle brakes with this one you see drum brakes there um, but yet again our bearings are in here underneath this cap Similar to the one outside, a little bit more modern in design again. It's got the piggyback trailer, the combi, with the uh, the separate launching trolley. So four studs again. Um, the hub cap there that comes off, exposes. And a similar type of housing, um, housing again, except instead of this being bolt-on, it's actually within the axle itself. So a purpose-made axle. And this trailer has its own spare wheel carrier as well. If you're doing any mileage at all, you definitely need a spare wheel for these small tires, small wheels, and also I'd say uh, a set of bearings as well. So I've got my little carry trailer here. It's a uh, six before bed, probably take half a ton or so. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this wheel has <laughs> really started to wobble. So I'm going to inspect the bearing. Hopefully the bearing will still be okay. 
and uh, it should be just a case of tightening it up and uh, re-greasing so let's have a look at that now so the tools we're going to require are very straightforward really you need a spanner so that we can loosen and tighten the castellated nut you'll need some form of pliers or grips uh, so that we can uh, take off the split pin and replace it uh, some sort of uh, bearing grease for your trailer might depend on the type of trailer you have but um, you can look that up it's quite uh, readily available and uh, well this is <laughs> uh, a tire iron or um, a tire spanner like this uh, to undo the uh, the wheel nuts and obviously a rag for your hands so I know uh, on this trailer that this bearing needs adjusting um, and it's uh, it's unladen and I can just move the, uh, the top of the wheel back and forth in and out that is I'm not going side to side I'm just going in and out and uh, you can see and hear that bearing moving and that's quite bad actually so uh, first thing to do is to take the wheel off I'm going to take the wheel off in this case and uh, to initially just crack the uh, the wheel nuts I uh, need the trailer on the ground the weight of the trailer so sort of clamps the tyre so that I can turn the nuts rather than turning the wheel if I had it jacked off off the ground the wheel's free to turn and it's a lot more difficult to um, undo the nuts especially initially so uh, we'll do that first but quite often uh, if you're just doing a bit of maintenance you might just jack the trailer up take the wheel off the ground and then you can actually check um, the bearing then um, doesn't have to be on the ground and, and quite often um, you don't want any weight on there to check that but this one being so bad and such a light trailer there's the example Right, got the uh, the trailer just chocked off now, so the, uh, the wheel's not on the ground. And uh, although I've loosened off the nuts, they're sort of snug enough to hold the wheel against the, um, the actual bearing housing there. And uh, so, as you can see, both that way and that way, that is like super loose. So, and it's quite noisy. So you can sort of see the state of the nuts, sort of surface rust really. <coughs> A bit of grease on those threads doesn't doesn't hurt. And the wheel itself, you know, it's got patches of rust on there. These types of wheels, you know, they're they're not particularly long lasting, but yet again it depends how you keep it maintained especially with boat trailers and things. If you keep everything washed down with fresh water, that's gonna help in the long run. <coughs> right, there you go, look at the rust in there. It's all surface rust, but things to keep uh, an eye on in time. And there's our bearing, and that's really bad. <laughs> Loose nonetheless. This particular type has actually got a grease nipple on there which uh, you can, if you can get a grease gun on there, you can pump grease in to sort of pack that out. Um, saves doing this job more often, but uh, there you go. So the uh, the hub cap comes off. You might, this is a plastic one, not on there very well. And it's got a crack in it, so that's gonna let water in there in time. So we might have to replace that. So this is the crux of the whole shooting match and uh, I'll bring the camera down so you can see a bit closer. Okay so uh, we've got a castellated nut here so that's basically a nut with these notches in it and then you have a split pin that goes through a hole in the end of the axle and engages it in these uh, castellations if you like and basically you can see that nut is loose but it's been prevented from turning uh, by the split pin so we need to uh, 
fold this split bin back again nice and straight so you can draw it out we'll undo all this and take the thing apart so with our simple tools then just a case of grabbing this trying to bend it flat you can use screwdrivers and god knows what anything to uh, get the job done really and a lot of that is dependent on how it's been put in in the first place <laughs> it's been twisted and things or used multiple times in an ideal world you just use these once but uh, quite often they get reused split pin didn't need a span to undo this initially it's super loose as you could see so yeah there's your castellated nut standard sort of nut these castellations all pretty standard there should be a washer in there now but uh, let's just there you go so there's a washer this one's got a couple of washers then the bearing itself now this is looking all a little bit rusty in here and uh, I suspect this has got quite wet and uh, a lot of the grease has been uh, washed out so this is the main sort of part of the bearing there's two of these there's one on the outside one on the inside and hopefully you can see there that they're tapered and so what happens is is by with this thread that the nut was on that on there by pushing that in it goes against the taper and uh, brings everything to bear correctly so I'm just going to put that to one side the actual hub so there's not a lot of grease in here at all this should be actually packed full of grease so this is the hub and on uh, each face in here that matches there's a bearing face in there that matches the angle of your tapers on here and the same on the back side as well because we've also got exact same bearing at the back here and a rubber boot and everything to stop water and dirt getting in the back so get this a good old clean it's a lovely job this old grease and dirt usual story <coughs> and then we've got the uh, the axle here which is just simply a sort of plain bearing well it's just a it's just a plain machined round really so we should have a it's important obviously to get the right if you've got to replace anything to get the right parts for your particular suspension unit now obviously this is an ancient one you can see it's quite rusty and uh, it's probably at the getting towards the end of the lifetime of the, this whole trailer really but um, a lot of them are pretty much sort of standards if you like if you don't know what you've got but the thing is to that's a nice sort of snug fit on there because everything's going to turn at the same time obviously you've got the, the the race here this needle race these are needle bearings rather than ball bearings because they're they're flat cylinders essentially rather than balls and uh, so that moves on there but the whole thing can also turn as well on here which is why we have grease everywhere generally um, so yeah if you're going to be doing any mileage at all especially with boat trailers I would say always carry a set of bearings a set being just these two guys um, for for your particular setup that you've got because it it's it's no biggie to uh, <laughs> to replace these on the side of a road um, and then you're sort of you know off again home and dry if any one of these goes and usually what happens is lack of maintenance they rust out a little bit and these cages go and so you then lose a, a, a bearing or two or it all gets snaffled up in there and it, it's just absolutely knackered then 
right I'm just going to clean these up they're a bit they are dirty slightly rusty but uh, all I'm going to do given the age of everything and stuff like that is just give them a good wipe down with a clean rag and uh, we'll just reinstall them as they are but what can happen is over time obviously these wear and the uh, inside of your hub wears as well in uh, in that bearing now and uh, which is why you tighten them up they wear a little bit you tighten them up by uh, bringing them together a little bit only fractionally you know with the castellated nut but there comes a point where these have worn and your faces in there have worn where <laughs> you'll have to replace everything buy new ones essentially and obviously they'll be that little fraction bigger to start again okay so I'm only going to just give these a sort of wipe down really a bit of a clean in, in the rag and um, as I'm not replacing them I'm just going to regrease them but what I am doing is just carefully going around and just checking so that the whole thing feels smooth and there isn't any sort of grittiness or anything in there um, and it, it does feel smooth and fine and I'm also checking to see that each of the rollers actually roll because what can happen is is that they can get stuck and so the whole bearing then is still going round and you end up getting a flat on one sort of face and it just it doesn't obviously roll then and uh, obviously that's a bearing that you need to then replace and uh, usually you, you repaired you would replace them in pairs so if one of these goes you just swap out the whole lot so yeah I'm gonna be happy with these I know I've got, it's an oldish trailer uh, I only do you know the odd mile or two around local lanes and things so um, we'll, we'll just try and use it to the death as it were um, but just with the sort of mental note that uh, you know these are probably um, borderline for replacing but so in out of them sort of inspected them pretty happy with that uh, you could go mad if you want and, and wash them out with uh, any sort of degreaser and all the rest of it but um, I'm not going to borrow really in this case it's just a case of repacking them with grease and uh, just reassembling right a dot of grease on there all the way around more the merrier isn't it everywhere grease in here and give this whole cage a good old slather in the stuff so it's gonna go in there like so Just reassemble in the uh, reverse <laughs> order, really. So that's the back bearing on with its supposed waterproof cover. Give that a right old goo up in there. So, yeah, the hub itself, giving it a good old clean out, got rid of all that sort of rusty type of grease and dirt and uh, moist sort of road grit that gets in there and um, don't be shy of uh, getting the grease in here and uh, between the bearings in here you almost want that full just to help everything so that's all in there like so, so that's going to go on there like that our other bearing here Now obviously if you had to do this as an emergency on the side of the road you're not going to sort of go all greasy on you and stuff like that you're just going to put the new bearings in and uh, get off the road to a safe place aren't you to like a lay by it and then you can actually uh, faff around get your wits back <laughs> from the trauma of things going awry and uh, yeah being on the side of the motorway is no fun at all right that what goes into there like that so that's all oozing out which is good and we'll just back a bit more in there again this 
the sort of job I think where you know just having stuff everywhere and not being very clean with the grease is not a bad thing it's all gonna help so that's the two bearings in there and uh, we just need to replace our washers here Now our nut. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the wheel back on just so I can get um, a feel for the tightness of these bearings and any wobble that may or may not be present. Okay, just a just a smidgen grease on there. I'll just do these up hand tight now, just to hold the wheel against the hub. So the uh, conundrum no normally is how tight do you go with this nut and especially where the hole is invariably where always where you want it it's right where one of these cancellations are so you've either got to back it off or you've got to tighten it up <laughs> um, but uh, yeah it, it's not gonna if you go that one uh, cancellation round in terms of tightness that's gonna wear off reasonably quickly I would have said Right, there's a slight bit of play there. Now then, can I go around one more? That's a hot. I'm just doing that finger tight. Yes, I can. That's better. There's a little bit of noise there, and I would say that's the age of the bearings. Myself. Okay. I'm happy with that and as you can see now that there's a minute bit of play there if I go one more which I might need the spanner for yeah I will there is a little bit of play there if I go one more you might actually hear the yeah see it is binding a little bit now and that might be too much. All right, I'll just nip that up just fine. Happy with that. So as I'm reusing the split pin, just in case of grabbing the long one, pull that back round on itself, push the small one in like that. So the head's in the constellation, that one's in the constellation. It can come right round. There you go. That's all squashed in there. A treat. Hubcap a little bit of a wipe. Hubcap back on. need to buy a new one this is a plastic one on this side a metal one on the other that's no good rain and uh, spray off the road's gonna get in there it's gonna that's probably what's caused this one anyway it's gonna um, wash out your your grease in time dirt and grit gets in there your premature wear are you bearing so new hubcap right I'm gonna take it back off the blocks so the trailers on the ground and then I can finally tighten up these uh, wheel nuts. So I've just nipped those up just to seat the wheel before the weight comes down on the ground. Very simple with this trailer, I can just lift it off the block. Tighten 
them up now. Well, I hope this has given you a brief insight into maintaining your own bearings on your small boat trailers especially. It's quite simple, doesn't take very long and it's something you should do especially as there are sort of general winter maintenance when you're not using the trailer or your boat and things like that. So yeah, uh, very much worth doing and uh, even from the point of view of if you're doing long trips you should really know how to change your bearings if you get caught out with uh, one that might collapse on you. So hopefully that doesn't happen by preventative maintenance. Uh, so yeah, hope this has helped. Like and subscribe if you like what's going on on the channel. Cheers.